وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی جنرل اسمبلی کے نو منتخب صدر وولکن باسر کے ہمراہ مشترکہ پریس کانفرنس کر رہے ہیں آئی آپ کو لیے چلتے ہیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی وولکن ایز ایکشننسی وولکان باسکر پریزنٹ الیکٹ تو دی سیونٹی ففت سیشن آف دی جنرل اسمبلی تو پاکستان اور تو دی فورن آفیس I also congratulate him for being the first ever Turkish national to uh, hold this high office. And with his elevation, because of the historic bonds Pakistan has with Turkey, we feel delighted that a friend, an experienced diplomat, a seasoned politician, a man with a vision is uh, assuming this responsibility in rather unusual times because of the COVID-19 situation. We had a good discussion on what the uh, future session is going to be like, the high-level segment. Uh, that will take place in uh, September. A number of options have been discussed and uh, we've exchanged uh, views uh, on that. And our preferences are more or less in sync with each other. Uh, we've had uh, wide-ranging discussions. We've talked about the current challenges and the challenges that, that the UN will face in the future, how important uh, multilateralism is, and both of us who have strong belief in the principles and the purposes of the UN Charter uh, would like to strengthen, promote multilateralism, and how, under his leadership, as President of the General Assembly, we can um, carve out a way forward through the General Assembly session to strengthen multilateralism. Obviously, we discussed the COVID-19 situation uh, and how nobody can be safe until everyone is safe and how important uh, the vaccine is going to be. It's not just the development of the vaccine that is important, it's the availability, the affordability for, for everyone, everywhere, which is equally important. And, and the UN has had two resolutions on that. I briefed the President-elect on the delicate and ever-evolving situation uh, of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. We've had a very uh, good uh, uh, discussion on that. The evolving situation, the uh, military siege that has gone over for a year now, the human rights violations, the continuous and intensified um, ceasefire violations, the search and cordon operations, and the atrocities that are being committed, the unilateral actions, and the threat those actions pose to peace and security of the region. I also exchange notes with the President-elect on the situation in Afghanistan, the facilitating role Pakistan has played in making, in pushing forward the peace and reconciliation process there, the challenges that lie ahead, and the positive developments that have taken place, you know, in, in, in uh, the talks the Doha Agreement, 
and the decision taken by the lawyer Jirga yesterday in Kabul. I also uh, have spoken and highlighted uh, the four initiatives very close to the heart of the Prime Minister, that is climate change, countering Islamophobia, combating illicit financial flows that have impoverished uh, the developing world, and the debt relief for initiative of the Prime Minister for the developing world. In short, we've had an excellent exchange of views. The President-elect uh, had a good meeting, a good chat with the Prime Minister, and I'm very happy uh, he could take out time to uh, visit Islamabad. He's been here before, uh, but in different capacities. But in this capacity, this is his first visit. And I look forward to receiving him again once he's resumed responsibilities as the President of the General Assembly. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> and may I now invite the Honorable President-elect of the United Nations General Assembly for his remarks. Thank you, Your Excellency, brother. I'm very pleased uh, to be in uh, Pakistan upon the invitation of His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Maktoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi, who I feel like a uh, brother and a very able uh, uh, statesman who is doing a wonderful job for this country as, as Foreign Minister. Uh, before I begin, I would like to express my condolences uh, to the government and people of Pakistan over the loss of lives at the blast today in Belugistan. Uh, we had uh, originally scheduled this visit to take place uh, end of uh, July. Unfortunately, we uh, had to postpone it due to some technical flight uh, problems back then. Uh, but uh, for a Turkish citizen who has uh, been elected as the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, it is uh, from the heart obligation to visit this brotherly country uh, and to, uh, in a way, pay respect uh, to the long-standing uh, friendship we have uh, shown to each other and uh, which will be with us for another hundred century. <laughs> I had uh, various uh, visits to Pakistan in my previous capacities and today I have the particular pleasure of visiting as President-elect of the 75th session and uh, it is just shortly before my uh, travel to New York to officially assume uh, my duties. I'll fly to New York next Monday and uh, finalize the transition period with the existing uh, presence uh, team. Uh, I, I have uh, to thank the Pakistani authorities to, for the warm hospitality that was accorded to me in Islamabad. Uh, Pakistan is a key country at the United Nations and it is one of the reasons uh, beyond the, our long-standing friendship and brotherhood uh, that uh, from the United Nations perspective this visit was absolutely necessary as well. Uh, Pakistan is a member of the group of 77 and China, non-aligned movement and the organization of Islamic countries. And it's not just uh, being a member to these groups, it is an active member where uh, everybody looks uh, what Pakistan is proposing or doing in order to uh, move in, in these groups. Uh, also, uh, Pakistan makes uh, extensive and substantial contributions to the United Nations work in all its pillars, including uh, peace operations. and. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to close cooperation with Pakistan in my term as the President of the United Nations General Assembly. I have uh, chosen a distinguished Pakistani diplomat <coughs> as my Deputy Chief of Cabinet and I'm confident that with his extensive experience in UN issues 
Ambassador Farooq Khan uh, will make substantial contribution to the work of my office and uh, the 75th session of the General Assembly. I am also looking forward a fruitful and close cooperation with Pakistan's permanent representative in New York, Ambassador Munir Akram, a good friend and very able diplomat, who is currently the president of the Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC. So the agendas of these two decision-making bodies out of four, namely the president of the General Assembly, Security Council, Secretary General and ECOSOC. Uh, the, these are the four pillars of the United Nations uh, decision-making and progress-making uh, system. And we have uh, to see that these institutions and bodies uh, not contradict but complement each other and uh, avoid any overlapping in their agenda. So we will try to harmonize the essential work of these four organs but having Ambassador Munir Akram on top of the ECOSOC will make life uh, very much easier and to establish the coordination. Uh, today I have called uh, on His Excellency the Prime Minister Imran Khan. Uh, I was very much uh, honored and impressed about our discussion. He's uh, a well-known uh, political figure in the world and I think uh, he has uh, uh, a vision uh, for the region and for the world peace and security and also with important issues the world is dealing like the climate change or uh, uh, reaching to the uh, countries in difficulty least developed countries uh, landlocked countries small countries island countries asian countries african countries I think we are looking to the same direction that the United Nations role must be more the countries in need than the countries which can do without the United Nations. So as the PGA I have mentioned many times that even though I have been endorsed by the Western European group and others, Turkey is also a member of the Asian and Pacific group, but Turkey is also uh, has a more uh, global role where we can have uh, a larger dimension in our priorities and projects. So I have seen that the Prime Minister together with Mr. Qureshi are looking to the same direction, keeping, uh, keeping uh, the look at these countries uh, and uh, create a new vision or realize what has been decided already. So that will be, uh, I think, uh, very important uh, during this one year uh, to, uh, to also increase the credibility of the United Nations as well. Uh, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the United Nations Foundation which constitutes a historic occasion to reaffirm the commitment to multilateralism. And I think uh, multilateralism is, is the key word. And I think without multilateralism, we can't have United Nations or any international fora. So first thing to do is to give a chance to multilateralism at the General Assembly platform and to give a chance to countries uh, to present their voice, their problems, their difficulties so that everybody can listen and understand and then it will be much easier to deliver. Uh, of course we are currently facing with serious immediate problems in different parts of the world including humanitarian crisis and uh, deadly conflicts. And now we are facing uh, also a uh, unprecedented uh, global uh, challenge, which is the, the uh, pandemic. And COVID-19 is uh, first and foremost a health emergency. But it is also a threat with social, political and economic consequences, as well as 
human rights repercussions. So I, on this occasion, I would like to extend my condolences for Pakistan's losses caused by the pandemic and wish a swift recovery uh, for the patients. But I think Pakistan has been a good example uh, for, uh, for the world with its uh, uh, policies uh, which handled uh, the, uh, the pandemic-related uh, policies very well. And it is one of the, the figures show that Pakistan has done better than many other countries in the world. And I'm happy to observe it also uh, here with my own eyes. Uh, I think the pandemic uh, proved uh, once again that uh, common problems require uh, common responses. And in our collective response to the pandemic, we must focus on the special needs of the most vulnerable across the three pillars of the United Nations. I think uh, restoring people's faith in international institutions, especially with the UN at their center, is also crucial uh, in the face of challenges causes, caused by COVID-19. And uh, UN uh, General Assembly has a central role to play in this global fight against pandemic and safeguarding uh, multilateralism. This is why I have uh, been long and loudly advocating that the General Assembly should resume its normal functioning with meetings in person while taking appropriate protections uh, for the health. And uh, I think uh, uh, this has to be also coordinated with the local authorities uh, for the earliest return of the UN to normalcy. And first thing I will do when I go to New York is to contact with the governor and the mayor to explain them that UN is New York and New York is UN. And while you're opening uh, museums, uh, streets, Central Park, warehouses, construction sites, uh, it is absolutely necessary that the UN starts functioning as well. This three months, four months period, I think uh, was a blow on the credibility of the United Nations. While people needed the United Nations, United Nations stayed at home with virtual meetings and uh, with uh, decisions uh, without a voting and I think uh, we must really bring the United Nations back to life with this high level week with a, uh, it must be a glorious return, physical meetings with the participation of civil society, stakeholders, uh, specialists, leaders from countries so that the world must believe again that UN is alive. Otherwise, if it goes on like this, we can really uh, start losing the United Nations and this is, we don't have the luxury to have this kind of a situation. So that is why uh, we, I have as the president-elect uh, in a way uh, entered into the decision-making process very strongly and as, as it looks now, the General Assembly will meet physically and there is no restrictions for uh, leaders or country representatives to participate <coughs> unless there is a uh, uh, big change in the health conditions in September. So we will evaluate in September on uh, whether to recommend leaders from countries to uh, be present or uh, pass it to their representatives in New York. But it must, we must first see the situation in September, and I'm sure that as the schools are opening and things are looking better, <coughs> we will have a chance to see representatives of countries, the level of leaders or foreign ministers, some of them might be, be there. So these were the uh, remarks I wanted to share uh, with you. Uh, of course, uh, uh, being here uh, with two hats is, uh, is a pleasure and honor, but also makes life a little bit difficult because as, the, as a Turkish citizen or as a brother from Turkey, my, my hands uh, are very, very large. I can do anything I want, 
Well, as the PGA, there are some rules which we have to uh, obey, uh, and <coughs> especially respecting the impartiality rule. That is why uh, some of my statements might be restricted uh, to the uh, necessities coming from this impartiality rule, but uh, I will never forget that I am a Turkish citizen and a brother of Pakistan in that respect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We can now take some questions. So my request would be if you could kindly first introduce yourself, your media outlet, and also indicate to whom your question is addressed to. Shokat Pracha, some of whom uh, you I know, and the rest I look forward to knowing. Shokat Pracha. Thank you, Mr. Spokesman. Since you are conducting first time, we also welcome you here, your rich experience, your wider exposure, and your extensive diplomatic uh, expertise will also benefit all of us. My question to honorable uh, visiting president-elect of the UNGA is that you are welcome here in Pakistan in the month of August. And this month, India was partitioned. Pakistan and India became two countries. And in this month, the unfinished agenda of the partition is still pending, which is ish dispute of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, how do you see the role of United Nations, particularly the United Nations General Assembly, in resolution of the Jammu and Kashmir dispute? And my question to Honorable Foreign Minister is, when UN Secretary General was here, and he was here after the 5th August last year, he did not condone the measures taken by the Indian government of last 5th August. So world body is responding to Pakistan, to the Kashmiris. How you plan to keep it up that one day the Kashmiris will get, their, get, get the justice and get their rights? Thank you. Uh, <coughs> as uh, I have mentioned uh, previously, the President of the United Nations General Assembly uh, impartially represents the United Nations membership as a whole. Uh, Turkey's uh, position regarding the issue of Kashmir is well known and uh, expressed at every level by the <coughs> Turkish government. And on the 5th of again, there was a, a strong statement made by the Foreign Ministry. However, the position uh, of the United Nations on this region is governed by its charter and applicable Security Council uh, resolutions as it was previously expressed uh, by the United Nations Secretary General uh, during his visit or during other occasions. So uh, there is also the 1972 Simla Agreement between India and Pakistan, which states that the final status of Jammu and Kashmir is to be settled by peaceful means in accordance with the Charter of the <coughs> United Nations. <coughs> Uh, resolving the dispute over Jammu Kashmir is uh, key to sustainable peace in, uh, in the Southeast, South Asia. And uh, regional security uh, should be maintained through political and uh, diplomatic uh, solutions. Uh, difficult challenges can be resolved peacefully and satisfactorily uh, through meaningful mutual engagement. Today, uh, during our talks, uh, my brother, the Foreign Minister, and the Prime Minister uh, presented their position and approach to this issue. It was, uh, ev even from this perspective, it was worth coming here to hear from with, with my own ears and to see with my own eyes uh, how the situation is and to understand it uh, much better so that uh, when it comes to the United Nations level, uh, it will not be by reading notes, but uh, getting the impressions of the brother Pakistani uh, people uh, face to face. So if my assistant as the <coughs> president of the General Assembly is by the parties, I would be ready to provide a contribution uh, within my mandate. Uh, uh, the from can, I, can I just respond to Prasad? Uh, 
Besides being the chief diplomat of Pakistan, I also happen to be an elected representative of the people. I mince no words uh, in front of the president-elect highlighting the situation, the grave situation uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, a situation and the unilateral actions that can threaten peace and security of this region. I don't want to dilate further on that, but everything that had to be shared was shared honestly with the President-elect. The Prime Minister also um, elaborated or went further. And I can assure you uh, and the media uh, of Pakistan that we conveyed the sentiments of the people of Pakistan uh, to the President-elect. You are aware that the Security Council has deliberated on the Jammu and Kashmir dispute three times in one year, which is unprecedented. Uh, and we are grateful. But the General Assembly is the parliament of the world. And as the President of the General Assembly, I would do whatever I can to uh, collect other countries, to present to the President-elect the need for a discussion on the dispute of Jammu and Kashmir in the General Assembly, because that is the pulse of the world. Security Council has its significance and importance, undoubtedly, but that forum the General Assembly of the United Nations is a different forum. And that is the forum that highlights the, 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 the views of the Committee of Nations. So that would be one of my uh, uh, desires if I can achieve that. The President-elect has very clearly said, and I, I, I completely respect that, that if you need and if we desire for a sustainable peace in this region, then the issue of Jammu and Kashmir has to be addressed. The people of Jammu and Kashmir are not just disturbed, they are very concerned about the demographic change taking place there. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the woman child from GRD. Uh, thank you, sir. This is this is Zargun Shah from Geo Television here. Uh, my question to the foreign minister is that uh, Pakistan recently issued its political map. I would like to ask uh, the foreign minister: Would you like to elaborate on Pakistan's principal position on Junagadh, because India forcibly uh, occupied and annexed Junagadh also? Thank you. Finally, uh, my question to the Honorable Mr. Bosco is that uh, uh, what will be your role being the President-elect of the UN General Assembly to bring the Ummah to a single platform? Thank you. you want to go first? Uh, on the question of uh, launching the political map of Pakistan, uh, I, can, uh, I can share with you, and has been said before, that this map reflects the aspirations of the people of Pakistan. And through this map, we have uh, incorporated in this map the will of the people by saying where Pakistan stands on the issue of Jammu and Kashmir, what is our position vis-a-vis Sachin, what is our position vis-a-vis Sir Creek, and our position on Junagar is amply clear. If we look at the principles of partition and Junagar and the accession, you know, where it should have belonged. And to the question asked to me, I think it's uh, uh, the PGA's role is to uh, have every group, every, uh, every voice 
to have a chance to be reflected. But of course, it, it works not from the PGA to the General Assembly, but it, it works from the General Assembly to the PGA. So when I'm in New York, of course, uh, any need will be uh, evaluated and uh, I will look favorably to any, any request uh, which I see that must be treated positively. So as of now I can say this, while working there together with, with my <coughs> right hand uh, Ambassador uh, Farouk, we will also look into these necessities and decide on the priorities and the calendar and if it is possible or not, of course, but there are groups also in the United Nations, uh, the Islamic group, the Arab group, the Asian group, so they have <coughs> a, a power of uh, creating the public opinion or the UN, UN opinion, and I will have uh, breakfast meetings with limited number of ambassadors every week, one or two, three, four times, so this will let me understand what is the uh, the wind blowing and sometimes uh, uh, get their vision or also give them some ideas that they could perhaps exchange with others to make it possible. The Shumaila and the Lib. Thank you, uh, Shumaila and the Lib, Associated Press of Pakistan. Uh, given the recent developments in the region, uh, uh, what are the specific areas that Pakistan is going to highlight at the upcoming session of UNGA in New York? And uh, secondly, are you going to participate in this session? Thank you. Well, uh, I have uh, I've, uh, shared my views uh, and my recommendation uh, to the Prime Minister would be that we should participate. I believe uh, physical participation means a lot more than a virtual engagement. Uh, you can convey more, you can feel more, and you can be better understood while you're physically there. And this is the 75th session. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an important session. It's not a normal, usual session. It's a historic uh, session. So I would uh, encourage uh, Pakistan to physically participate in that session. On the priorities, you said, I said there are a number of issues that I have just uh, touched on. Uh, obviously, uh, the most important priorities are uh, the Jammu and Kashmir dispute. Uh, this is an um, issue which is um, uh, on the agenda of the UN, cannot be overlooked, should not be overlooked. Uh, it will, you cannot wish away, uh, even if you want to. So this will keep simmering till it is addressed. The issue of uh, uh, debt relief for the developing countries is equally important because uh, the developing countries is facing the challenge, the twin challenge of uh, saving lives with a fragile healthcare system and uh, dealing with the economic situation because of the global contraction and the recession, you know, uh, bordering uh, the Great Depression of the 30s. How do we protect these very, very indebted, vulnerable countries? Uh, the Secretary General has taken uh, some initiative. We're grateful to the G20 countries. They have helped. But we feel, Pakistan feels more needs to be done. Thirdly, the issue of climate change. Uh, the Prime Minister has been talking about yesterday, you know, uh, while encouraging tree plantations in Pakistan, the Prime Minister spoke elaborately on how important environment change and climate change 
the impact it has had on RV production, for example. Uh, and we primarily are an agrarian economy. Uh, illicit financial flows. How loot and plunder and siphoning off uh, money through corruption uh, uh, in the third world uh, developing countries has impoverished uh, the people uh, of these countries. How important this is and how do we need to check the flow uh, uh, of money out of countries like Pakistan. And uh, Islamophobia. The world has seen and the world has reacted, in the, in particularly in the US, to racism. When George, George Floyd was, uh, you know, uh, killed, the way he was killed, there was a spontaneous reaction to that. I personally feel that the, uh, the OIC countries must join hands and speak up uh, because Islam is being portrayed and Muslims are being targeted. Uh, hate speech and new ideologies uh, have risen. You know, ideologies that uh, made the world suffer, like uh, the fascist ideology. Today we see new, new ideologies. The ideologies being uh, propagated by extremist, fundamentalist organizations like the RSS are of concern. And I think there has to be a clear message from the, uh, from the UN system on how to deal with hate speech and Islamophobia. So these are some of the priorities that Pakistan would like to uh, highlight in the coming UN session. So we can take one last yes, question. Ji, Mateen Hadid. Sir uh, Mateen Hadid, representing GTV Network. A uh, question to UNGA President-elect, Excellency. You have talked about credibility of United Nations and being the President-elect of UNGA. <clears throat> so you also spoke about uh, impartiality. So how could you like to make comment that there are United Nations military observer group on India and Pakistan, which is a very vital department that monitors situation in Jammu and Kashmir and particularly line of control violations. Pakistan has permitted that group number of times to visit line of control and collect the facts. But continuously India is blocking United Nations military observers group visit uh, to their part of the line of control. So this is the biggest UN violation. It's an official group created by the United Nations. I think even if you keep the impartiality, so uh, definitely there has to be comment. How would you like to uh, make your voice while sitting at UNGA president to make this United Nations military observer group in India and Pakistan more stronger? so that they can independently report the situation over there, particularly India's, un, uh, uh, India's violations at the line of control and continuous targeting of civil inside Azad Jammu and Kashmir, which is also uh, a great human rights violation. And question to Mr. Foreign Minister. Mr. Foreign Minister, you have highlighted the priorities. Uh, indeed, these will be definitely discussed, but how would you like to make comment as an independent comment that with the passage of time, we have seen United Nations has lost its effectiveness when it comes to the Indian occupied Kashmir situation. So what are your comments to make UN more effective as far as Indian occupied Kashmir is there? We have seen your zeal, your enthusiasm <coughs> as far as human rights violation, but UNBC is not playing that effective role. Thank you. First, uh, I'm still the president-elect. Yes. I will take office on the 15th of September. So I think the better way is uh, not to make any comments now. And to, uh, when taking the office, we will have uh, coordination meetings with the Security Council, the uh, Secretary General, and also with uh, ambassadors there. And I think it will be much better after understanding uh, the situation to make remarks or to uh, propose initiatives. 
at this moment. Uh, I don't feel, I don't think I have the right to make any statements where in a situation which I do not control. Uh, Mr. Uh, let me comment on that. And uh, my view is that Anmogib has the mandate of the Security Council. And their mandate is very clear to ensure peace and security. Uh, Pakistan has given the observers on our side of, of life at the LOC the freedom to ensure, to, to uh, share and report. Unfortunately, on the other side, uh, they have been, uh, I would say, obstructed from uh, performing their responsibilities. That is why Pakistan is articulating uh, that the role of Anmogib must be strengthened at a time when the intensification of violations and ceasefire violations is growing. Uh, we saw uh, 2019, you know, the numbers were very high and this, this year, you know, to 2020, already we've had 1845 violations so far and we have some months to travel. So that is uh, uh, very clear. On the role the UN can play, the UN must play its role. It cannot, it cannot overlook the role. Because if the global leaders want to address the issues of peace and security, if they want to promote um, um, stability, if they want this region to develop, how will it develop? How will we attract investments? Uh, how will we uh, uh, ensure uh, regional trade, regional connectivity, when this very issue, which has been looming and lingering for years, is not addressed? I think it has come, a point has come, where this issue needs to be addressed. And if it's not, and if this uh, this wound keeps bleeding, unfortunately, peace and security of the region will get disturbed. And not just the region, it will have implications that go far beyond the region. But across the LOC are two nuclear powers, and Kashmir has become a flashpoint. God forbid, if God forbid, if things go spin out of control, the world will be sucked into that situation. Before that happens, the world and the UN must act responsibly and act now. Thank you very much, sir. And this brings us to the closure of this press takeout. I thank you very much for your participation. وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی اور نو منتخب صدر جنرل اسمبلی وولکن بوسکر کی اسلام آباد میں نیوز کانفرنس پاکستان کا دورہ کرنا میرے لیے خوشی کا باعث ہے پاکستان کا اقوام متحدہ میں متحرک کردار ہے کہا گیا نو منتخب صدر جنرل اسمبلی وولکن بوسکر کی جانب سے وزیر خارجہ نے اس موقع پر کہا کہ وولکن بوسکر کو بھارتی غیر قانونی مقبوضہ جموں کشمیر کی صورتحال سے آگاہ کیا ہے اور جنرل اسمبلی کے آئندہ اجلاس کے ایجنڈے اور کرونا کی صورتحال پر بھی گفتگو ہوئی ہے اور مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس اب سے کچھ دیر پہلے جاری تھی اور نو منتخب صدر کی جانب سے کہا گیا کہ پاکستان اقوائے متحدہ کا اہم رکن ملک ہے پاکستان کا اقوائے متحدہ میں متحرک کردار ہے